If you want to start using Smart Suite's time tracking field type, whether that's for simply measuring time on tasks, summing it up at the project level, or creating timesheets, then this episode of Smart Tips is for you. Hi, my name is Gavin Brennan. I'm a product specialist here at Smart Suite, and today we're going to be going over everything related to the time tracking field so that you are armed with all the details and tips so you can use this field type to make your workflows more efficient. So we're just starting here in a project management template solution. So you can go and download this at any one point in our Smart Suite template library on the Smart Suite workspace homepage. Now that we're in here, if you would go and navigate to the tasks table, you'll see that we have this time tracking log column or field. So this is a unique field type within Smart Suite that allows you to either start a timer that will track your time or add time manually. All you have to do to add a time tracking log field type is to create a new field. Um, there's a few ways to do that. You can either scroll to the side and go add it here. And let's go and type in time tracking. And then we'll click this time tracking log. It'll be in the project essentials category. And then we can go ahead and add it. You can select a display format between either having the pilled option with the color in the background or the clear option that just displays the logo and the text. I think I'm gonna go with the pilled option and select the color teal. So we're just gonna go ahead and add that field. And just like that, we now have a new time tracking log field within our table. So let's go ahead and just delete our old one for demo purposes. So now that we have this time tracking field, what do we do with it? Well, the idea is, is this is gonna represent some sort of track time for the record that it lives in. So because we're in tasks, this is gonna be the task time. So how long did it take to complete the task? Um, once someone's working on it, then they can go and update their time here. So the idea is whoever is the owner of a task can start to track their time by either clicking this start timer button, in which case now there's gonna be a global timer that is on for this specific task, and it won't stop the timer until I click stop timer here, or I can retroactively add time by clicking on this dropdown, clicking the plus icon right here, and then typing in a duration. So I can go here and say three hours and 30 minutes. And now it's gonna add that time to the task. Now, as you probably noticed, there's a few different ways where I can go and manually add time. So let's go back to where we were, and you can see we have three different options right here. So let's start in duration, which is where we just were. We type in a number, followed by H for hours, and then another number followed by M for minutes. We can also select the date in which this happened for notation purposes, and even a note so you can talk about what you did during that time. Additionally, you can also just start the timer from this larger screen in the same way you would by clicking the play button right here. And finally, you can also add a range where you put in a start time and an end time, and then it adds the difference into your time tracking log. So the basics of the field are pretty simple. The idea is this is going to be a total sum of all of the time spent on this specific record. So it doesn't matter if this is tasks, if you have this on a staffing page, whatever it might be, this is supposed to represent a rolling time for time spent on a task. But what if you wanted to go and say, all right, well, we are all working in tasks that are linked to the Allon product line launch project. So these are the three that are linked up to that project. And what if we wanted to find the total time spent between all of these tasks for this project? You would think to use the rollup field, but that's not what we're going to do here. For time tracking, that does not work because rollups do not support the time tracking log field. So instead, what we're going to have to do is we're going to go and create a formula that does that for us. So let's go back to the tasks table and add in some time into these fields so that we can have something to measure. So we have three and a half hours here, two hours there, and then we'll add an hour and 30 here. So now we have all of this time that's all allocated to the tasks inside of this project. And then on the project level, what we're going to do is we're going to go and create a formula. We type in formula and then we click it. Now we're going to want to click advanced editor, and then we're going to be taken to the formula building page. What we're going to do now is plan out what we're trying to do here, right? So all that we're doing is we're going to the linked records, the linked tasks, and then we're trying to pull the values for each time tracking field 
and sum it up into one total hours worked on this project, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the sum function. So I can go up here and search up sum. So what the sum is gonna do is it's just gonna take the sum of multiple values that you put in here. We're gonna go and type in the task. So we're gonna find that linked record to the tasks table. We're gonna use something called dot notation, which allows us to take this project tasks and dive one level deeper to be able to pull in the time tracking field itself. So we're gonna click period or dot, and then we're gonna say time. And as you can see on this side right here, we see the task time field. So now already we're going to have the sum of the project tasks and the task time. This is going to take all of the time that we have and sum it all up. So if we save this, though, it's not going to look the way we want it to. 25,209.00, right? That's probably not what we want. That's because this is calculating in seconds. So this is the total amount of seconds spent on this project. I'm not sure if that will be useful to you, but I know for my workflow, uh, seeing the total amount of seconds is not the best way to go about it. So we're going to go back to that formula and we're going to go and make a couple of changes. First off, we're going to go and divide the time by 3,600. Now, why 3,600? That's because there are 3,600 seconds within an hour. So if we take all of this time and divide it by this, we'll get a total amount of hours spent. So if we save this, now it's gonna show the total hours. So we have seven hours here and we can rename this to total project hours. And if we go compare this to our task, so seven for Allon product line launch, and then we can go here and see that we have three and a half, two and one and a half, which equals seven. So it's taking whatever changes happen here and reflecting it in a total project hours tab. So the fundamental idea of taking the time tracking field to the next level is making sure that the records that you're tracking the time in have links to other tables where you can go and sum that up. Once you understand that, that really opens up the door for having timesheets or tracking things by projects. You can go track it by clients or team members if you have a staffing table, whatever you really need to make sure that you can go and track time and then sum up multiple different time sources into one place. So it's a pretty simple episode, but I wanted to make sure that we covered the basics here. If you have any further questions, make sure to go and ask them down in the comments below. And until next week, keep on enjoying SmartSuite.